Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is Spawn action figures. So if you're watching this, you probably know who Spawn is and you, you're familiar with Spawn action figures, but just in case you don't, I'll provide just a very quick little recap. So uh, Todd McFarlane is an artist who used to work for Marvel Comics. And he was a pretty big deal. He really kind of changed the whole look of comic books. And uh, he came along pretty pretty early on into my comic book reading career. Like, uh, I started buying comic books when I was eight years old in 1986. Um, and I was buying, I started buying Amazing Spider-Man when it was in the issue, like, 280s. And Todd McFarlane came on in issue 298. And then he stayed on for quite a while after that. And, you know, before Todd McFarlane, Marvel always kind of had a house style. So Spider-Man always kind of looked basically the same. And then McFarlane came in and just drew all these crazy dynamic poses and made the webbing really exaggerated and big, huge eyes on the mask. And just, uh, you know, really interesting designs, which really struck me when I was a kid. And he was my favorite artist he really influenced me and the way I drew comic books when I was a kid. Um, nowadays, um, his style isn't my favorite. I do see issues with it now when I go back and look at some of the stuff I loved as a kid. But there's no denying uh, like the influence he had and that he was you know, a really dynamic, amazing artist. I am still a fan. You know, Just uh, for Christmas, I think two years ago, I, I got this uh, The Art of Todd McFarlane. Good old book full of stuff that covers his career. Um, you know, I, I'm a fan of Todd McFarlane, not just for his artistic skills, but how he does his own thing. So it's it's well documented that uh, in the early 90s, uh, Todd McFarlane, as well as a couple other superstar artists over at Marvel, they decided to leave Marvel and start their own company because they wanted to create characters that they retained the rights to rather than just keep writing and drawing characters that Marvel owned and making Marvel richer. So each of them created their own, at least one of their own characters, and Todd McFarlane created Spawn. So this is my Spawn comic book collection. So it starts here, runs all through here, all through here, and ends here. So at the start, I've got a couple of mini-series, uh, so Blood Feud, uh, Witchblade, Hellspawn. Right here is where we start with the earliest books. So I always double stack my comic books. So I've got issue one on the back, issue two, followed by issue three and four, etc. I collected those. I bought those on the shelf when they were brand new. I collected them solid. This box runs right up to issue 74. This one starts over on issue 75 and 76. Brings me all the way up to 248. And then this ends here from Spawn issue 275. And that is where I quit collecting Spawn. And I only quit for about 20 issues. I started back at 296 leading up to issue 300 and I've been buying it uh, steadily since. I believe 306 is the newest issue. And so Spawn first came out, uh, that was one of the launch books with Image, so that came out in 1992. And then, uh, you know, it sold a ton of copies and toy companies came knocking pretty quick and said, we want to make toys of your popular comic book. But after a meeting with some toy people, Todd didn't really like what they were doing and he wanted to do it himself. He decided to start his own toy company. Again, people told him, you're crazy. You don't know what you're doing. The same stuff they said to him when he wanted to start a, his own comic book company and go up against Marvel and DC. Um, but he started his own toy company called Todd's Toys. And he released the first wave of Spawn action figures in 1994. Um, by the next, I think it was by the very next wave, uh, in 1995, he changed the company name from Todd's Toys to McFarlane Toys. And yeah, both Image Comics is still doing very well now, all these years later, and so is McFarlane Toys. So both companies going strong. 
and he has made a ton of action figures. And the same way he revolutionized the comic book industry, he revolutionized the toy industry. In a lot of ways, he created the adult toy collecting market, which me and probably you are, uh, are our members. And yeah, so we I think we owe Todd McFarlane a lot for all, all this stuff. So um, yeah, I'm going to get into... Uh, the Spawn figures I have. And I actually don't have a lot. Um, he produced Spawn figures from 1994 right up till 2008 on a regular basis. And sometimes there were two or three waves of figures a year. So he got up into series like 25, 26, 20, like a lot of waves of figures. And I didn't buy a lot of them. Now, besides Spawn, uh, after a couple of years, he got into making other toy lines. So he did Movie Maniacs. So he did all like the horror icons like Freddy, Jason, Mike Myers. Um, I have some of those. Um, he did some other kind of random one-off movies. Like he did Austin Powers. Uh, I used to have some of those figures. He did uh, like Little Nicky, the Adam Sandler movie. Uh, then he did some comic ones. He did like Danger Girl. Um, he did various sports ones. Um, like he did f- football, baseball, hockey, basketball, I think. I wasn't really into the sports figures, but my brother collects them and has a ton of them. Um, but he did movies like Sleepy Hollow. Um, and then he got into, he kind of got away from Spawn in the last few years. Like I said, they're still going strong, but Spawn petered out around 2008. But he's been going strong with the Walking Dead figures and Halo figures and more recently Fortnite figures. And he just got the license to do DC figures. So yeah, he's kind of shifted away from his own stuff and he's doing more of this licensed stuff and that's fine. But uh, because I didn't buy a ton of Spawn figures, I originally thought when I was going to shoot this video that I would do um, all my McFarlane Toys figures because like I said, I have a couple from Sleepy Hollow. I have a couple Movie Maniacs. Uh, So I thought, yeah, I'll just cover all my McFarlane Toys. But when I started hauling them out, I realized, oh, I have a lot more of these things than I realized. And whenever I get a toy up here, I usually end up talking about it longer than I intended. And I figured I'd I'd end up being here all night talking about all my different McFarlane figures. So I said, I'm just going to just going to stick to the ones in the spawn line. They're not necessarily all spawn, but they're usually spawns, friends and enemies, and they all fell under the banner of spawn. So one last thing I want to talk about before I get into showing you all my Spawn figures is what prompted me to do this video. So if you watch my videos regularly, you'd know that I I covered Toy Fair um, in February. So a lot of toy channels that are, are more established than me actually went to New York to the Toy Fair and spoke with creators. Um, by me covering it, I just mean I uh, watched those videos and then regurgitated the news to you. Um, But Todd McFarlane was there talking on other channels and to other news outlets, um, showing off some of his new stuff, mostly licensed properties. But he said he wanted to bring back Spawn and he wanted to do a big elaborate anniversary action figure that was kind of a tribute to the first Spawn figure he did back in 1994. But because it was just gonna be one figure and not necessarily a continuing line he was having a hard time getting retailers to commit to carrying this one figure because apparently they they wanted him to send a whole crate of different figures that they could sell. So he said he was going to do a Kickstarter and he got a little bit of flack online for that because people were saying, you know, you're you're already a rich guy who has his own toy company that's been well established. Why should you do a Kickstarter? Kickstarter is for up and coming companies that aren't established that really need to get a, you know, a leg up and so he got some criticism for doing a Kickstarter. But uh, I think his explanation uh, makes perfect sense that he wanted to make this toy. He believed there were people out there that wanted to buy it, but the retailers, who are the middlemen, weren't interested in connecting the two. So he said, if there's a market out there, I'll put it out there. They'll buy it or they won't. And if nobody bought it on the Kickstarter, then the toy probably wouldn't have happened. Anyway, so he put it up, the Kickstarter, with a goal of making a hundred thousand dollars and the figures are 40 bucks a pop so if enough people bought this 40 dollar figure to get him up to a hundred thousand dollars uh it would happen now he funded uh the hundred thousand in a matter of minutes i believe 
And by the time the thing ended, the Kickstarter ran for about a month, as they usually do, um, he raised just under $3.5 million. Uh, and that's that's crazy for an action figure Kickstarter. So uh, I backed it because even though I'm, I've never been a huge collector of Spawn figures, I do like the character of Spawn. The figures I have, I feel, are a little dated. And this new one he's making is going to be... Uh, have a lot more articulation and it looks really cool there's three varieties there is what he calls the classic spawn and this one is the closest as an homage to the original 1994 figure i ordered that one and then he's got the modern spawn which is still the same basic figure but he's got some different accessories his outfit is colored a little bit differently with some darker reds and some of the red areas are are solid black He's also got a different head sculpt, and he's got some slight variations on the costume, such as uh, he's got this big boot that he didn't have in the original figure. So I like the modern costume with the big boot, so I wanted that, but I also wanted the one that was an homage to the original figure. So even though they're pretty close, almost the same figure in a lot of ways, I ordered both of them. There was a third option, which was a black and white, I think what he called the artist proof figure, so it kind of looks like a sketch. Um, and I like the concept of that, but the price of these things, um, I just, I couldn't justify because it's $40 American. I'm Canadian. So the price in Canada is like 60 bucks. Plus you got to add the shipping on, and this thing is supposed to come in a huge box. So it was pretty expensive. So I couldn't justify the third one. So I bought the two and I'm pretty excited about them. They're supposed to come, um, before Christmas this year, I believe. So I'm looking forward to them. And that has kind of got me thinking a little bit about my old Spawn toys. And that's kind of why I wanted to haul them out and share them with you. So now, without any further ado, let's take a look at them. So let's start at the beginning. This is Spawn version 1. This was released in the very first series of Todd's Toys figures back in 1994. So there were six figures in the wave. And it was still largely marketed towards children because the adult toy market didn't really exist yet so you know some of the toys still had action features and there was a couple of kind of silly vehicles released with them as well and there was also a spawn alley playset. so this spawn figure i still think holds up really well like it looks really nice he's got this big crazy cape which was kind of spawn's calling card back in the day because McFarlane liked to draw these big, exaggerated things. So even when he drew Batman and Superman, he would draw them with capes that didn't make any sense. Like, there was no way those guys could walk around with these capes that draped, you know, 20 feet behind them. But uh, he always drew them that way. And he did a pretty good job of capturing it here in this uh, plastic cape. And there is some, like, kind of bends here. I've never really done it because I think if you bend them too much, the plastic... Uh, has a tendency to break, but the idea was that you could kind of wrap his cape around him a little bit, um, kind of like you might expect Dracula to do or something, but it never really stayed there, so it didn't really enhance the figure very much. Now the cape is removable. Um, it's got his little uh, skull symbols there, so you can just pop those out. Those are soft rubber. And so once you lift that up, you can pop his cape off. You can see there's a little peg in the back of the cape. And he's got this piece here, which kind of just helps support the cape. You plug that into his back. But that piece pops out relatively easily. So if you're playing with him without the cape, you don't have to have that big stupid piece hanging out of him. So, uh, yeah. And for accessories, he's got this like 2x4 with a big spike sticking out of it. So that's pretty cool. And then he has these two soft rubber chains that plug into his belt buckle and then just kind of plug into his back in these little holes here. I always found them very difficult to uh, keep in place because they're soft rubber. It's kind of difficult to stick them in the hole and get them to stay. And uh, as you can see there, I seem to be missing one of the chains. Hopefully it isn't lost for good, but it wasn't in my little bag of spawn accessories when I dug these things out. So it could be mixed in with GI Joes or something somewhere. But uh, yeah, so there's spawn. And I think this is a pretty great figure. And looking at it, you might not think this was the precursor to, uh, you know, adult collectibles because it is uh, kind of such a fun looking toy. And, uh, you know, it's pretty basic. Like he's, he doesn't have any uh, elbow joints. He's got 
you know, knee joints, but there's nothing at the ankle. You know, it's pretty straightforward. Legs go forward and backward, arms forward and backward, head turns. Uh, there's no like waist swivel or torso crunch or any of that sort of stuff. But you know, it's a toy you can play with and he's in a good neutral pose. So yeah, you can have him slap or punch somebody and uh, yeah, it would have been a fun toy. These things came out when I was a little too old to be playing with toys. Um, so I didn't buy a lot of them. I didn't buy any of the other figures in the first wave. This is the only one I got. And it was really intended as a display piece. And it was probably the first toy I bought with the full intention of just displaying it and not really playing with it. So yeah, there you go. This is the figure that the new Kickstarter figure is based on. And I'll pop a figure of that up, a picture of that figure up again, just so you can see the uh, similarities to the classic costume with the red all through here, which is different from the modern costume, which has the black. He does not have the big giant boot on here. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I've always liked this figure. It holds up today with figures that are still being made now. And so I think it's pretty cool that he's updating this figure with modern articulation and modern detailing and all that sort of stuff. Now this next figure is from Spawn Series 2, released in 1995, and this is Bad Rock. Now this character is not one of McFarlane's Spawn characters. This is actually from one of the other image creators, Rob Liefeld's uh, book Youngblood, which was his big launch book with Image. And in the early days of McFarlane Toys, uh, Todd was making figures of some of the other image creators characters like Shadowhawk and stuff were also in the line. And uh, Badrock here, initially named Bedrock, but uh, they had to change the name due to the lawsuit. Um, I don't know a ton about this character. I think the characters created by Rob Liefeld were pretty, uh, pretty shallow characters. There wasn't a whole lot to them. Most of them were arguably just ripoffs of Marvel characters that already existed. Some of them would, you know, to be fair, could have been knockoffs of characters Rob Liefeld already created over at Marvel. But uh, yeah, he just didn't seem to be bringing anything really new to the table. I only bought the first, I think, two issues of Youngblood and then I lost interest in it. But of all the characters you created, I liked uh, Bad Rock here the best because he reminded me of the thing from Marvel. But he was unique enough. He had a cool look. And this figure here, again, the articulation is nothing to, to call home about there. His hands turn, arms go up and down, legs back and forth, shoulder pads, these things open up. And I think he launched, you can see there's like a missile launch action here. So he, I'm sure if you uh, had those closed and hit the button, the missile would probably shoot out of there and kick these things back. I uh, never had the missiles. I actually bought this thing second hand and I actually didn't get it all that long ago. This is a figure I kind of wanted way back in uh, 1995, but I never got it. And yeah, so I saw it used at a comic book store a little while back and uh, yeah, I scooped it up. I think it was probably at most 10 bucks. And yeah, it's a pretty cool figure and I like it. Now we're gonna jump ahead a couple of years. So this here is Manga Spawn. This was released in series nine in 1997. And the whole wave was supposed to be kind of manga anime versions of established Spawn characters. So Spawn never wore this costume in the comic books or anything. Spawn has, I was gonna say, Todd McFarlane has a habit of not being slave to the comics and not just giving us stupid versions of like Arctic spawn or underwater spawn, the things you might kind of see in a toy line from Mattel or Hasbro involving Batman for kids. Todd would come up with these just crazy concepts for spawn that weren't really based in anything. And as long as they made cool toys, that's all he needed and fans bought it up. Um, I loved all these kind of crazy variations of spawn. So this guy here, he's got just kind of crazy detailed armor on here. Uh, not again, the articulation is pretty standard. Um, he, he bends at the knees, uh, not a ton. His legs go forward and backwards, not a ton. Probably more than what I'm showing you here, but these figures are pretty old now, and I'm a little worried that if I start trying to pose them, and they haven't been posed in years, they could break. They might be a little brittle. 
Um, so he also po poses at the elbow there. You can see that's articulated. The shoulders backward and forward. Um, the head, I don't know if it turns at all. No, head doesn't turn. Um, but yeah, you see there, elbow, shoulders. Um, he's got these little like spider-like legs. They're all articulated. Both, uh, uh, it looks like they might be articulated there, but I'm not sure what that does. But they're all articulated at the base, so you can move them around. There's actually six of those legs, so three on each side. And then he's got these translucent wings. I never found they stayed in place very well. They tend to just kind of flop around. Maybe they were a little more solid back when I first got them, but for years anyway, these things have just kind of flopped around loose. But they look cool, and you could probably get them to stay up if you position these little legs underneath of them or something. But yeah, you can see just a lot of big, crazy, spiky detail on this guy. Really cool. For accessories, he's got this sword with the spawn symbol on it. Some Japanese writing there. It's really cool. And uh, there are some metal chains down here as well on each side. Now with the head, I really like this head. Um because it's spawn uh, exposed and kind of unmasked. So you see what uh, they often describe as his hamburger head. Because if you weren't aware, spawn is a guy that was like burned terribly. Uh, so that's what he looks like underneath there. But the reason this moves around so much is because you can pop that down so it tucks away. And he's got a little mask or helmet that pops in over top of it. Um, and the pegs to hold it in place here are kind of soft rubber and they've kind of worn down over time and I'm worried if I jam you see like it almost looks like it's gonna break off I'm worried if I force it I might break that helmet so I can't get it into places the way I'd like um, but this thing should rest flat which keeps the head tucked away and it looks really cool like I like this helmet design but ever since I took it out a couple of years ago I've never been able to get it back in quite right so I just kept them on display like this which I still think is pretty cool. But yeah, the helmet design, I quite like with those green spawn eyes and all that stuff. So pretty cool. So now we're gonna jump up to series 12. This was released in 1998. And this is a spawn villain known as the Heap. Now I can't remember the Heap's origins. I think this was actually um, kind of an older classic character that Todd McFarlane got the rights to and introduced him into Spawn. Um, I don't know if he still has the rights to him because I don't think Heap has returned. I don't recall him ever coming back. Um, but this is a great figure. So he's, uh, he's got an articulated jaw and he's got this big hollow mouth and he came with a bunch of kind of stupid accessories that could fit into his mouth like just human bones and skulls and all that stuff. I have it all laying around, but uh, yeah, it was just really cool that he came with all this junk and you could li literally stuff him full of junk. He's supposed to be like a living heap of garbage. So you can see here he's got a uh, skull in here. This is an actual piece of paper that's glued to him, and that was part of the original figure. Um, you see here, these are, these are pieces of plastic, but they look like shards of glass because they're clear. He's got a tire, a shovel handle, Again, more bones, more glass, a bottle, more paper, just random pieces of metal. Like there's just so much detail going on this guy. He's got like a toilet seat on his knee, like a pair of scissors and some uh, like electrical cable in his feet. There's a hammer over here, more bones. And there's so many shards of glass. They are actually a little, little sharp, these pieces of plastic. But yeah, just really cool. And I like the way this guy moves. Um, so his arms do go up and down. He swivels at the wrist and at the elbow. Um, like I said, I already mentioned the articulated jaw. He spins here at the waist pretty good. Gives him a good range of motion. His legs, you can see they're articulated, but they don't, they don't move a whole lot. There's not a ton of range of motion there. Um, and I think that's about it. So it's not a ton of movement, but it's enough. Um, Enough to be fun. So yeah, I really like Heap. It's one of my favorite Spawn figures ever produced. Now also from 1998 Series 12 is the Creech. Now this character here, um, he was not a Spawn character. I don't think they ever linked him to Spawn's universe. 
But this guy here was actually created by the artist I mentioned earlier, Greg Capullo. So when McFarlane stopped drawing Spawn relatively early on into the Spawn run, he tried to find an artist that was similar in style, and he found Greg Capullo. And over the years, Greg Capullo really came into his own and had a really cool style, and now he's gone on to draw Batman for DC, and he's really become a superstar in his own right. But uh, while still at Image, he took a little break from Spawn to do a mini-series of his own creation, and that was this character, Creech. And uh, I'll be honest, I didn't love the Creech comic. Again, maybe Capullo wasn't, uh, you know, he should have stuck with what he was good at with drawing and maybe left the writing to somebody else. But uh, I love the look of him. It's so different. Like, this is his face. It doesn't seem like it's where it's supposed to be. I guess he's just got a crazy hunch. But uh, it's just such a bizarre design. So you've got these beady little eyes here. Looks like it's bursting out of his chest almost. And then, I can't even get them all in the shot, but then he's got these crazy, like, pipe type dreadlocks and these things are all on wires so you can turn these around they're soft rubber and they're wired but you can pose all these tentacles however you like and then he's got these massive hands with lots of sculpted detail in there uh, and again really big feet and those are just design elements I really love so you can't do a whole lot with them when his arms are up you know they cover up his whole torso there but uh, yeah his arms do swing up and down he swivels at the waist there really good um, his legs swivel as well and uh, I don't think there are any accessories these little things pop out they're kind of soft rubber um, but otherwise that's about it but this again is just a a really cool design figure and I'm glad that McFarlane managed to squeeze it into his uh, his spawn line so next up from 1999 this is Series 14's Mandarin Spawn. And this thing here is a work of art. Um, this, I think, is just a head and shoulders above everything else. And even though McFarlane was known for his intricate sculpting and his, you know, his paint work, you know, he didn't skimp out on paint details, like this thing here is just beautiful. Like, look at the head sculpt on this guy. So all this sculpted detail here and all these little pieces are painted. So many different little paint apps. It's, uh, you know, it's amazing. He's a little dusty here. I probably should have cleaned these things off, but this is one figure that from the day I bought it, it's never not been on display. There have been a couple of times when I was in different apartments where I didn't have room to display a whole lot of stuff and a lot of things end up, ended up in boxes. But this thing here has always been out because it just looks incredible. Like this whole kind of dragon or demon face on the torso and then he's got this shield piece here and again so much detail there and that just clips onto his forearm there he's got this double bladed sword they come apart um, he's got these two other little swords that are sheathed here the whole part comes off so you can take both cheese off together um, I believe this big shoulder spike can actually be removed as well I haven't taken out taking it out ever um, and then look at the so he's got this soft rubber kind of skirt in front of him here and it would have been very easy knowing that that skirts in the front to you know skip out on the details beneath it but even though most people would never see these pieces when this figure is displayed just look at those knee pads those knee pads are crazy the fact that they put that many paint apps and that much sculpting detail uh, look at these legs these big crazy like monstrous like bird like legs like I don't know what this guy's deal is again this was not based on anything that happened in the comic books this was just an idea that either Todd or one of his sculptors came up with and they just ran with it and yeah it, it's awesome this is my favorite figure that McFarlane Toys has ever produced so yeah great great stuff now this one's kind of weird this is from series 14, same as Mandarin Spawn, 1999. And it is called, uh, so the little guy on top here is called Iguantus. So he's like a little lizard guy. And then he's riding a creature named Tuscadon, which seems obvious because of the big old tusks. 
Now, the weird thing about this character is, again, at least at the time, it had never appeared in any Spawn comic books. I don't think it ever has. And it doesn't really seem to fit in to the Spawn line. Like, one of the ways Spawn is able to get away with making all these weird variations of Spawn that we've never seen before is because he's explained that there have been many, many Spawns over the years. Um, you know, the devil grants powers to some guy and they become a Spawn. And so, you know, it makes sense that there was a medieval Spawn and there was a Spawn in the Dark Ages and a Spawn, you know, in ancient Japan and all that sort of stuff. So, and there'd be Spawns in the, in the future and everything. So that's why you can come up with all these cyber Spawns. Um, but a character like this, it looks like it should be based on something specific. It doesn't really seem to blend into the Spawn universe that I'm familiar with. Like, they often showed Hell and the little demons that lived in Hell, but none of the demons look like this. Like, this just isn't in the established aesthetic of Spawn. Like, this looks like it would fit more in with, like, say, a, you know, a Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones type of thing. But uh, it's just a cool figure. I think what appealed to me about it at the time is that it reminded me of the little dude in Labyrinth that rides around on a dog. And, uh, yeah, like, there's no denying it. This is a cool design of a figure. It has a big skull on the front. Like, the Tuscador here has got a really cool, ugly design. You've got the real chains, which always is nice. Makes the, feel, the figure feel like it's a higher quality. Again, lots of nice little sculpting throughout here. The uh, saddle mount here is kind of soft rubber. Um, this flag here is removable, and that's kind of like a soft rubbery piece, too. And then uh, Iguantis, I really like his kind of unique armor there. He's got this little axe accessory. He's got a little plug in his butt so he can stay on his, uh, on his mount there. It kind of fits on that square. And so yeah, it's a cool figure, even though it is kind of an oddity in the world of Spawn. So this figure is also from 1999, but he's from series 15, and this is Cyber Spawn. So again, a completely original idea, not based on any comic books or anything. Um, but they just took Spawn and made him cyber, whatever that means. And if memory serves, um, kind of like with the manga line, they just took a bunch of established characters and kind of cyberized them and made them all in the same aesthetic. So uh, Spawn is the only one I got. And unlike the manga Spawn, there's nothing that, like, you can't pop this guy's head off and find a recognizable spawn head underneath. Um, you know, he doesn't have the recognizable spawn colors or, like, the super obvious spawn design. Like, it's a little hard to recognize this as a spawn. It's a cool figure, and it fits into, you know, the spawn aesthetic. But, yeah, it's a little odd that it's a spawn, I think. But, uh, again, just the detail in this thing. It's dusty. I should have cleaned it. But like all these little uh, pipes and hoses, like these are all like soft rubber. Like it looks like there's blood or something flowing through all these things and they're, they're all over the place. You got this tail here, um, which is soft rubber and it can be bent and posed with a wire. Um, the hands, pretty elaborate. You can see these claws are articulated at the knuckles in a couple of places. So you can kind of make like a fist really cool and I, I do like this design of this character quite a bit and yeah this hand here it's got a big just a big blade for a hand it's pretty unique but uh, yeah I dig it so there you go there's cyber spawn now this figure here is from the year 2000 it's from series 17 and this is spawn version 5 so this is just regular old spawn it's not from a alternate reality or the future or the past this is based on spawn's design and this is the first chance i have to show you that big spike boot i was talking about that's available on the more modern spawn figures i really dig this this boot design now this toy looks cool i don't have them displayed very well you can see he's got real metal chains draped all over him i'm sure there's a better way these things should be displayed um but yeah looks really cool the way he's standing on this base of skulls looks great. His cape, it's soft rubber this time. And you see here, it uh, he's holding it in his hand here. 
So there's this little sliver of cape that you can just tuck there into his hand. And uh, you got a chain around his neck. Do a close-up shot of his head there. And it looks cool. But these are the kind of figures I really actually had a problem with in that they were really more statues than figures. And even though I don't play with my figures, I do like to kind of fiddle around with them when I open them up. And all of the uh, sports figures that he made, they were always in these dynamic poses. Like maybe they were on one leg taking a slap shot or they were jumping and doing a slam dunk. But the problem with that is that they were stuck in those poses. Like you would have a Michael Jordan that was just always, you know, his arms above his head with a basketball and he was leaping. But if you wanted to just stand him up, you know, display him next to a Spider-Man or something, you could never do that because he just wasn't in a standard pose. I would rather a figure that can be stood in a standard pose and then be posed the way you want to pose him. And this figure here, he looks really cool, but he might as well be a statue because you can take him off of this base so you can see there, there's just some pegs for his feet. But like this leg here, there's no articulation. So his leg is constantly stuck like that. And this arm, like here, I can pop his whole cape off here, I think. And now you're left with this spawn. So his arm is stuck in that position. Like there's no movement on his shoulder, like that's uh, that's posed that way. Um, this arm here can't go up or down. Like it has a swivel there at the giant kind of gauntlet, but no swivel here. Like what are you supposed to do with this thing? There's chains all mangled here. But uh, yeah, I have no real interest in collecting toys like this. If I wanted a pre-posed figure that you couldn't do anything with, I would just go buy a statue. Um, it just seems kind of silly to give this thing any articulation and, and sell it as an action figure when it's stuck in a pose like this. And this became a little bit more commonplace the longer that uh, the Spawn line went. Like again, there was a really cool figure that he made where Spawn was sitting in his uh, throne made of skulls. And that was a really cool figure too, but Spawn was stuck in a seated position. So like you couldn't play with a toy where Spawn was always sitting down. So yeah, this figure looks cool, but honestly, I don't care for it all that much. This figure here is Violator version 3 from series 20, released in 2001. So Violator is probably Spawn's main villain. And he was included in the very first series of figures in 1994, but he was just a bendy toy. So he, he looked like Violator, but all his arms and legs and his whole body was just wired, like something you would get in your Christmas stocking from the dollar store. Um, I don't even remember what version two looked like, but version three, we finally get the Violator figure I think everybody wanted. Because Violator always looked cool, right from the very first issue of Spawn. And uh, the, the toys just weren't doing him justice. So this guy here, he's really big. And especially like with these legs bended the way they are, if he was to stand completely upright, you know, he'd probably be 10 inches tall or more. Um, but the, my favorite thing about this guy is the articulated jaw. Because in the comic books, whenever he closed his mouth, he always had this really long underbite like that. You can actually kind of create that here with this figure. But he looks better with the mouth open and then he's got the soft, soft tongue in, inside. Um, so yeah, the legs articulated er, a little bit his feet are also articulated so they can spin around a little bit he's articulated at the uh, at the wrists I believe yep so you spin at the wrists and the arms themselves can backwards and forwards um, and that's about it for articulation I think it looks like he's got a joint there so he should move at the torso as well but this guy is really stiff I am scared to move him around too much um, Cause like there's some separation happening here at his shoulder. I had him displayed with his this arm up above his head and when I tried to move it down for this video, he started cricking and cracking. So yeah, I'm really worried to move him around too much. Uh, but man, he looks great. So there you go, that's Violator version three from series 21, released in 2002. We have Wings of Redemption Spawn. Now I think Spawn actually did get Angel Wings at some point. But initially it was just kind of a cover 
that they had drawn. So it was an attention grabbing cover to show Spawn there with these angel wings, but it wasn't indicative of what actually happened in the comic book. So when this toy came out, this wasn't really based on anything more than just a striking image that appeared on a cover of one of the comic books. But uh, yeah, like it is cool seeing Spawn with these big feathery angel wings, but uh, the base of the body is, it's pretty boring. Like it's a very stripped down version of the Spawn costume. So he still has this big giant spiky boot. Um, so a lot of the design elements you're used to seeing are still there because big crazy gauntlet but not really being able to see the the M and when you lose the uh, stark black and red, like this guy is just kind of a muted gray. Um, and I don't think time has been kind to this figure. I feel it's gotten duller over time. Even the wings have maybe yellowed some, but, uh, and they're soft rubber. So there's some movement to them, but just moving them around, I feel that they could potentially break. Like I'm worried they could rip and separate right right from the the rest of the figure which would be a shame so yeah he still makes a, a good display piece but uh yeah a little bland to be honest with you so also from series 21 in 2002 is raven spawn so again this figure was just a unique design it wasn't based on anything at the time though i believe they integrated it into the comic book later um, when I was flicking through my comic books there earlier, uh, you saw the cover to the miniseries uh, Hellspawn. I think that look was taken from this figure. So let's get a close look at his face here because it's, it's a really cool design. It's just kind of like a skeleton underneath there with the, the green glowing spawn eyes. Uh, and the face is you know mostly in shadow because the helmet kind of seals him up. But yeah, it looks really cool. And then he's got this you know, kind of Batman-esque cape and cowl. And this is just soft, soft rubber. Um, again, a lot of nice sculpted detail, stuff you you don't really notice unless you're really looking. But like these spikes are actually pretty sharp. It's kind of hard to hold on to. Got these little skulls sculpted throughout. I really like this chain belt with these kind of like meat hooks hanging down there. I probably wouldn't recommend getting a belt like that, but uh, it looks cool. Um, and then here again, spikes all over the arms, a lot of little design elements, skulls and everything in his staff looks really good. So yeah, just another great design figure. And I can understand why that once they created it, they thought we should do something more with this and find a way to use it. So yeah, he's articulated. So you see, he's got a mid leg swivel there. Um, I think he's got some even foot articulation maybe, um, but he bends at the knee. Bends at the, well, see, not a bend, it's kind of a swivel at the elbow. So it does limit the articulation some. Uh, he's got a mid torso joint. So yeah, this guy fares better than others, but uh, his head doesn't turn at all. And yeah, I still don't think you could, if you really wanted to play with this thing and have a dynamic fight or something, I think you'd probably have some difficulty as even though he's got joints, uh, he's still pretty rigid and he's pretty much stuck in one basic position but yeah it looks cool as hell now this figure comes from series 28 released in 2005 so you can see there there was a few years where i didn't buy any spawn figures and uh, this one here i think was gifted to me from a friend um, so he had it and he had it on display and then he said man do you want this he just wanted to be rid of it um, and it's cool, but this is exactly what I was talking about with the, uh, the guy with the knee who was stuck in place. This thing is essentially a statue, but I feel if it was a statue, it would be of, you know, higher quality. It would be a big, heavy material. And if you really wanted this battle scene, it would be something that you would display in a glass cabinet somewhere and take good care of it. The problem with these is, you know, Todd McFarlane makes these things for quite cheap. I don't remember how expensive this thing was, but it wasn't probably anything too crazy. But to do that, it's, you know, it's kind of cheaper materials. It, it topples over. Um, and anyway, this thing is busted all to hell. You might not be able to notice it right away. You might not even be able to make out exactly what's happening here. So, uh, 
it's recreating a, a scene directly from the comic book where Spawn has to fight the giant demon Urizen. And I'm going to kind of show you it piece by piece. So this figure, just to show you what the scale is like, most Spawn figures are about six inches. So here's Raven Spawn standing next to it. So you can see Urizen is quite a bit bigger because he was supposed to be a giant character, but he's, uh, he's not to scale. And that's why they put a spawn in there that's only about two inches tall. So that little spawn is way at a scale with the other figures as well. So he just pops off of there. So here's spawn. So not a lot of detail on the face or anything there. But there's still a fair amount of detail in this thing for such a little little figure. And he looks pretty cool. Like the details in the cape and the chains is really nice. Now you see here this energy blast, his hand is stuck to it. So this was all one piece. So Spawn was like this. So when you take this thing apart, you've got this really awkward little arm holding this piece of plasma blast. So it's no wonder that that snapped off because unless you kept it exactly how it was meant to be displayed and this was something that I didn't really have room to display at one point so I had to kind of put it in storage and that's when it started snapping and breaking all the hell. So there's the first issue. Um, next up is yours in here. So he just pops off. He's got a couple of peg holes there for his feet. And so yeah, he just pegs in there. Now, Yurizen looks really cool, and when he appeared in the comic book, I wanted a figure of him, but I wish they found a way to give us one that didn't have this giant plasma blast stuck to him. Like, that's not removable. Um, let me tilt this up so we can get a little better shot of him here. So, yeah, he's got this giant weapon. This is also uh, broke, by the way. So you see the top part of his blade... That might not actually be broken. Maybe that's meant to come apart for storage. But uh, yeah, so here's his face. So he looks like kind of something out of Pacific Rim almost. Very kind of bat-like. Uh, it was very hard to make out the details of him in the comic book because he was mostly just a big black shape with green eyes and a green mouth. Um, so yeah, you're seeing him probably in more detail here than you ever saw him in the comic book. But uh, yeah, he looks really cool. And then he also has these big giant kind of spiky spider legs that grow out of his back. You see he's got two of them. Again, I don't know if that qualifies as broken because I think they are supposed to snap in there and, you know, they're somewhat articulated. I'm sure I have the other one laying around somewhere, but I'm not sure where that is right now. So those things come out, but then this is what you're left with. He's kind of in this moaning because he's getting blasted in the gut and you can't really pose him any other way. It's very hard to get him in the shot here. But, uh, yeah, his head's thrown back. Like, if you wanted to display yours in, in some sort of neutral pose, it's uh, it's impossible. Anyway, as for the base, the base has got a lot of nice details. But these three little trees, and again, these look great. These look like the kind of things you would go into, like, a little uh, hobby shop and buy for your train sets or something. But these things here are attached to the base. Like, they were glued in place. It would make more sense if there was holes that these things could plug in and plug out of. But I think all three of the trees are actually broken. So right now I can kind of lean them in place a little bit. But they're all wobbling out. So yeah, this thing here is broken in so many places. It's it's basically junk now. I do like this. This is actual metal here. This little diner sign. Double-sided. And that does plug in and plug out. So that still works out okay. But otherwise, this is a... Uh, a cool thing, cool idea, but not really my thing as far as action figures go. Just too much, too much going on here. Now, if this next figure isn't your cup of tea, uh, you might want to log off now because pretty much all the figures I have left to show you are in this style. So I had kind of gotten over buying spawn figures because I thought they were kind of too hyper detailed, which I appreciated, but at the same time, I was into collecting, you know, G.I. Joe's, Masters of the Universe, Transformers. A lot of these things are just a lot 
simpler looking by design and just having all these dark and grisly figures from McFarland toys that you couldn't really display or fiddle with. They had all these little pieces that would fall off of them and stuff. I had just kind of gotten out of collecting Spawn figures. But then when I saw these things, I kind of got pulled back in. So these weren't based on a comic book or anything like that. This was just Todd McFarlane decided to come up with a line of figures as if there was a Spawn animated series. Now there actually was a Spawn cartoon on HBO several years earlier, but that was done in the same dark and gritty style as the comic book. But this is as if Spawn had a Saturday morning cartoon. So very kid-friendly designs. Looks very similar to kind of the DC uh, universe that uh, all the Warner Brothers DC characters had on the various Justice League animated series. So yeah, it's just a really fun redesign of Spawn. So yeah, this line, I think it was just called Spawn Animated. It was series 30, came out in 06. And uh, yeah, it's kind of just back to basics. So it doesn't move very much. It is basically in a, another statue, so I know that does kind of break one of my rules about wanting it to be an action figure. But this thing is just so crisp and so nice, it just displays really well. Unfortunately, he's kind of leaning. Uh, he didn't always do that, I think. Just over the time, he's kind of front heavy, and now he's kind of warped. So that's a little disappointing. Um, he does come off of the base here. Probably hasn't been off of there in years. But uh, so yeah, you can see he's got the big giant spiky boot that I love. Big giant spiky gauntlet that I love. The cape, soft rubber. And then yeah, just the classic design elements of Spawn. In the comic book, Spawn had really kind of gotten away from his original 90s superhero look. You know, he was a lot more chains. He often didn't wear the mask and it was just his burnt up face showing. And this just kind of went back to basics. And uh, yeah, I think it look, just looks really cool. I love this animated design. I would totally watch this Spawn cartoon. So yeah, I really dig it. So also from series 30 is Overt Kill. So this is one of Spawn's classic villains. If you were to name Spawn's like kind of top three or four villains, Overt Kill would be up there. Um, but he was never a character I liked all that much. I thought his design was kind of goofy. Um, even his name, from what I understand, he was originally supposed to be called Overkill, but again, there was some uh, lawsuit or something, so it became Overt Kill, which just doesn't roll off the tongue as well. Um, so yeah, there was a couple figures made of Overt Kill in the regular Spawn line, which I had no interest in. But when it comes to his animated line, I don't mind his goofy look so much. Um, got this real metal chain kind of wrapped around his wrist there. I think he had a couple of interchangeable weapons perhaps that went into this hand. I actually got this figure again not too long ago um, from the same comic shop Giant Robot Comics where I bought the uh, Bad Rock figure um, and yeah so this thing only cost me like I can't remember if it was five or ten bucks but I couldn't pass that thing up because I really liked the look of these animated figures, but I don't think I had ever seen Overkill at the time. And one thing that was cool is I actually bought him and this he was missing this hand. So I thought, well, he still looks cool, but it's kind of a shame to have that vacant spot there. And so I came home and I kind of tried to find like pieces from Apocalypse, my Marvel Legends figure that I could plug in there that might uh, fit the bill. But then uh, the next time I went to Giant Robot Comics, which was months later, uh, the owner had this set aside for me and he said he found it after the fact and he meant to give it to me next time he saw me. So that was really cool that he gave me this chainsaw hand. So my overt kill is closer to complete. I think the only other thing he's missing is on the side of his head here. It just looks like he's got kind of a misplaced ear. Um, there's supposed to be another piece with an antenna that attaches on top of that. So that's just a peg for another item. So I don't have that. But otherwise, as far as this character goes... This is, I think, the best he ever looked. It really works for the Saturday morning kind of design. He doesn't really work for a big, dark, and gritty character. Um, but yeah, I like this figure. Now, also from Series 30 is the Redeemer. Now, this is arguably one of Spawn's other arch enemies, but he's also sometimes Spawn's ally. So I don't know how you would categorize him necessarily. But he always had a really cool design. I've always really liked this character. Well, 
Actually, the character sometimes kind of sucks, actually, but I like the character design. It's a really cool look. And uh, they've made a couple of figures of him in the uh, traditional McFarlane Spawn style, but neither of them really did it for me. Uh, I think the second one they made was pre-posed. He was in like a flying pose and his legs were posed in a certain way that you could never have him standing up. And again, that stuff kind of drives me crazy. So even though these guys aren't really posable, at least they're standing in a neutral pose, which I like. So again, I'll pop this guy off of here for a second. So you see that really kind of crisp gold and blue design looks really good. He does have some posability there. You can see he moves at the arm. Uh, he moves at the wrist. Uh, swivels at the waist, maybe. The legs actually do move forwards and backwards a little bit. Uh, the head. Um, the head's actually removable. I'm not going to bother to pop it off, but uh, he actually has an alternate head, so you can see what he looks like underneath there. So that's kind of cool that they gave you that. And actually, I forgot to mention that with the uh, the Spawn figure, they actually gave you an Al Simmons non-burnt up head to put on your Spawn. So yeah, that's kind of cool too. But anyway, Redeemer here, he's got this uh, sword. Now, there must be a way to get it into his... Because he's got a hand here, which is clearly designed to hold a sword. And yet the sword, when you look at it, I don't know how I'm supposed to get it into that hole on his hand. Looks like it might come apart there. Yeah, it must. Anyway, see, all I've done is I just kind of pushed his closed fist through here. So it's just kind of resting on his wrist. I'm sure that's not right. But uh, anyway, it's a cool sword that he comes with. And yeah, then you see his kind of angel wings on the back, the green. It's just, yeah, really cool look. Really dig the way this character looks. And uh, it actually looks like I broke his display base because the peg is supposed to be attached to the base rather than his foot. But uh, I don't think that ultimately matters very much. Works either way. So there we go, there's the Redeemer. So there were actually, I think, uh, six figures in series 30, which was the first animated spawn line. Um, and it must have been successful because they returned to that in series 32, released in 07. And I believe there was another six animated figures, but I only have three of them. So I only have about half of the animated figures they released, um, but I do really like the look of all these characters. So this here, I'm not sure if you recognize him, but this is the Creech, the Greg Capullo character, who's got the weird hunch which puts his face right in the middle of his chest. And so those there are his uh, kind of bendable dreadlocks. And they work the same here. There's wires in there, so you can pose them however you want. He's got those big giant hands, those big giant feet. Um, I think it works pretty well. My only issue with this figure is McFarlane usually doesn't seem to shy away from big toys. I think if it was Mattel or Hasbro, maybe not so much today, but back in the day, you know, they weren't concerned with making big characters bigger. Everybody was kind of the same size with their toy line because it was more expensive to make bigger guys. But McFarlane, if he wanted to make a big character, he made them big. Like, for example, let me bring up the original Creech. So here's the original Creech figure next to the animated Creech. Now, if I pose... That Creech next to Spawn, you'll see how much larger Creech is. Um, not just in height, but just in girth. This guy is just got so much more plastic involved to make him, except generally they weren't more expensive. If there was one big figure in the wave, they were usually the same price as the little guys. So if the character was supposed to be big, they made him big, and I appreciated that. But when I bring in animated Spawn here, now you see he's a lot bigger than the standard spawn, so I'm fine that they wanted to scale up the animated figures. But if you're gonna scale up spawn, you gotta scale up Creech. Like this guy looks like Creech Jr. or something. Like he he's a full, you know, head and shoulders below spawn. And that kind of drives me crazy. It looks like he's from a completely different lineup. It's like when you get Ninja Turtle figures. And, you know, your turtles stand taller than Leatherhead or, or, you know, bigger than Bebop and all that sort of stuff. When you know from the cartoons and everything, those characters are supposed to be much bigger. 
but instead they're designed smaller and that's what's going on here it kind of drives me nuts if this guy was in a vacuum then i'd love it, it looks cool i like the animated look and it's a character that i really dig the design of but i just hate how he's so out of scale with the other animated figures also from series 32 in 2007 is tremor now tremor is another classic spawn character this guy first appeared in the very early issues of spawn and he's a character i always really liked the look of they did make a couple of figures of him in the classic spawn line including the very first wave of spawn figures back in 94 but uh, i never was satisfied with how those figures looked the first one was too simplistic and the second one I thought was just kind of overly detailed and overly posed. Um, it's a character that I think really works well in the animated style. You can really see kind of the dynamic colors and uh, yeah, I just think he looks great. I love that facial design. And uh, yeah, I just really dig this figure. Doesn't move very much, uh, spins at the waist a little bit. Uh, the arms go up and down, so yeah, you get, Probably better movement in him than you do most of the other animated style figures. But yeah, I was glad to finally get a Tremor that I could display. And yeah, I think this guy looks fantastic. I wish he didn't have quite so much of a hunch because it's a little hard to see what's going on with him here when you've got him displayed on a shelf. So I wish his, I wish his uh, head was facing upward a little bit more. But uh, yeah, really cool figure. No real complaints there. Now this here is the last Spawn figure I have to show you. This is also from Series 32, and this is Raven Spawn in the animated format. So you might recognize him. I had Raven Spawn here back in uh, Series 21 from five years earlier. And so they took this design and cartoonified it. And I think they did it pretty successfully. Now obviously they've changed up certain things all these spiky gauntlets and spiky boots, um, the chain belt, a lot of those things are gone. But that's you kind of expect that in a cartoon. Things that would be hard to draw, they just kind of simplify and streamline. But the most iconic thing is the cowl with this kind of, uh, you know, the way this is cut, the way it frames his face, that, that skeletal face. So that's all here. Oops, look, I just, just pulled it right off. I don't know if I've ever done that before, to be honest with you. But there you go, so you got his skeleton face there. I really like that they've given him some color, you know, rather than just be kind of solid black and gray. He's got all these gold highlights, which look really nice. The blue skin uh, really kind of makes him stand out. He's got the big boot, similar to Spawn's big spiky boot. Yeah, I really like it. And yeah, the cowl, again, you see there, it's soft rubber. It's got some movement to it. The figure itself, uh, so his arms move some. Uh, and that's probably about it. The head, the head turns. Uh, I don't think you're going to get any movement on the legs there. But still, a really cool display piece. I guess you got to put his arms down so it's hood fits properly and there you go so there's raven spawn so that is my spawn toy collection uh, i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please uh, leave me a comment below hit like on the video subscribe to the channel and uh, since i've got all my mcfarland toys hauled out um, there's a good chance i'll do another video to cover the other McFarlane toys I have that weren't based on Spawn, so the Movie Maniacs and other random stuff. Um, so yeah, if that's something that you're interested in seeing, please let me know. If this video doesn't generate a ton of interest, maybe I won't bother with that right now. But um, yeah, I think that's all I have for now. This video is long enough as it is, so I'm not going to ramble on anymore. But uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.